All right, so I just wanted to give you guys a bit more information on off-grid live steaming. Right now I'm in the process of building some steam. The engine's running very slowly. It's generating not that much power, but uh, it's constricted with this line here, which goes into the exhaust, which uh, helps ensure a good draft. Here we've got the displacement lubricator, something that's often forgotten when talking about steam engines. Uh, these right here, this cup here, this copper cup, and this aluminum tank, and there's a little radiator down there in a pot. These are kind of like little condensers so you can capture your steam oil because this is a total loss system. Doesn't necessarily mean you'll lose it. You can get some of it back, but uh, when you oil the various ports and parts here, it all drains away, and I try to collect it all in that bucket down there. Chain drive to the PMA. Big coils, this uh, has a, actually a KV of 0.6, not 0 0.7, it's three phase. Produces wild AC, you can kind of see the voltage it's producing here. That's just the, uh, I didn't need one that goes to 300 volts. I mean, best thing this will do is like 150 volts, so it works. Little three phase rectifier. Oop, that's the controller talking with it. This uh, is hooked up to a wind turbine controller so that the voltage of the coils can be higher than the batteries. Uh, tested the pop-off valves today. Um, I'm sure some people who run steam are gonna be really annoyed with me doing this, but uh, I had these loosely put on there because as you can tell, they kind of spatter a bit if they haven't run in a while. Even with these cans on there, it's spattered over there. We've got about 20 pounds, uh, probably 18 pounds on the boiler. Tiny little whistle, doesn't really make a great sound. My other whistle makes a bunch better sound. Your curly cue, your, your hope is that somewhere in here there's a condensed water from steam because uh, most pressure gauges don't really like to have steam directly. There's actually, there should be like compressed air and air steam mix in here. You got your sight glass, very important. It's got these little copper bars to protect it. Fun thing you can do is that if you turn the top off, the water will start to suck up slowly because as the uh, steam, this isn't air in here, this is steam. The steam will condense and it'll contract and you'll see the water slowly get sucked up. If you got like a smudge in there, like this guy, it's a pretty quick way to clean it. And then when you open it up, it equalizes. In the event that this gets cracked, you know, you shut these off top and bottom, and you're onto your tricocks. That way you can tell where your steam is. One of them will produce steam, like right now the water level's about with the upper tricock. You can, you can have more of these. I just have two, two's about the minimum. Over here's the supply side. I don't have a steam injector. Those are pretty uh, pretty difficult to find and pretty expensive when you do. So cheaper options, a little 12 volt diaphragm pump. This is some high temperature tubing. That's why it's the only tubing that's really interfacing with here. Got a little reserve of water here. But uh, as long, th this pump will do about yeah, 60 pounds. So as long as you don't get past 60, 70 pounds on here, it can keep up. Uh, and even if you do on a boiler this small, if you're running low on water, you can run that steam down real quick to get it to the point you can add water. Because your biggest danger with a boiler, aside from a fitting failing and turning into a bullet, is that uh, you run out of water and the thing turns into a bomb, which is really dangerous. But you've also got your blowdown over here. I've got two valves on the blowdown. But uh, you open this one, then you blow the boiler down that way. Uh, and then this, there's also this valve here, which this is an air line. It's currently just doing air because sometimes to prime the pump, you need to let it circulate a bit. But usually most boilers, you'll have some kind of air compressor fitting on there so you can test the boiler. Um, and then we got our fire. Fire's burning really nice right now. It's kind of a pain to cut logs down to this size. Oh, there she goes again. Oh, I didn't catch it. Uh, temperature's definitely getting hot, you know. Ooh, that hurt. <laughs> that's supposed to keep the handle cool, but we all know it doesn't. Getting, that's a really hot fire. Normally, uh, I don't run it this hot, but uh, this is my first time I'm really testing that little draft guy there, so this thing should actually perform pretty well right now. now that's, you know, you're gonna be a over fire, but you know, the, the temperature drops down and you got water in the boiler. That is probably still a bit on the hot side. Normally I like to keep it around 500 tops. Uh, and I'll crack the valve open and release some more steam out of this 
even though we're only sitting at like 18 pounds with a half water in the boiler. But kind of keep an eye on your fire temperature. A uh, little thing about boilers, at least little boilers, they are a pain to get started in the morning. I've got these uh, fire bricks around there to kind of keep some heat in the uh, boiler. And I did cover up the other insulation behind this flashing here. Then there's more insulation hidden in there. That's exposed. That could be insulated. That'd improve efficiency. But uh, these bo little boilers are really prone to backdrafting. So your fire will come back out through the door and smoke you out. It's another reason why I have one of these little CO2 monitor. Uh, if you're really running well, you can get it below a thousand. Um, when you first start up, you might be in the orange or the red, which is really annoying. But I uh, just want to give you a little bit more background on this little engine. And uh, this one is definitely the experiment to, you know, test out different things. This guy down here, it's a lot bigger. That's the guy he'll drive. And if anyone knows anything about off-grid wind, you know where that came from. Another displacement lubricator. They're roughly the same size. It's hard to find small ones. And this is the uh, firebox for the big guy. And the big boiler is uh, on the other side of the shop and just some cardboard kindling for the wood stove. Primitive attempt at a gasifier setup. Kind of works. Definitely makes wood gas. It's just a matter of getting it into that little generator. But um, yeah, just a little boiler. Huh? And uh, we're, we're running along. Getting nice and hot. Nice little engine here. Runs really smooth. I just wish it had a bit more power. It's a, it's a very small engine. Sometimes these are called sewing machine engines because they were actually uh, meant to run sewing machines because they're so small. But um, this actually looks like a project engine from the, uh, I'd say this was probably made in the 40s or the 50s. It's not a true steam engine because if you notice on the cylinder, it's missing something. If anyone can uh, guess before I tell them. But, um, missing these. Cylinder cocks. So you can let the liquid, uh, the liquid water out as it, because the steam will hit the cold engine and condense into water, and water's incompressible, you can blow your cylinder. Ooh, that was a good one. But, um, yeah, that's a... You could put them in if you wanted to, but that tells me this engine was either a project engine by uh, just a machining apprentice who went really hard, or, um... Possibly, this is a, a pneumatic engine, because pneumatic engines don't need cylinder cocks. Um, but it's got the meat to handle the heat. I mean, also, when an engine is running, you, one, don't stick your fingers in here, you know. A million and one ways how that can go wrong. But the engine should entirely get hot. Uh, that's how you know it's running at efficiency, because it, it, it'll be dissipating heat, of course, but if the engine's hot, then the steam inside is not being dissipated or condensed down into water, which is bad. It's still running smooth. Still very hot, and I wish my pressure would rise a bit faster, but, you know, keeping the optimum level of water in a boiler. We'll see. Anyway, I know some of you guys wanted to hear the engine, and some of you guys were asking if I had a channel, which I do intend on doing more steam content, especially once I get the big boy running. But uh, yeah, I have wind, I have solar, but you know, in the dead of winter, <laughs> if you're home and you're bored and you're gonna be heating up a wood stove anyway, which is kind of a glorified wood stove, it'll keep your shop warm and produce a bit of power while you do it. All right. That's my fuel right there little propane tank to help uh, start her up. It's very, very small. It's a bit, piece of bent copper pipe in there. You don't need much, but it does help with uh, getting it started. Alrighty.